so consider this question it was asked in gate 2004 it was a two mark question a very simple question here what they are saying is consider the following set of processes with the arrival time and cpu burst times which is given in milliseconds okay so we have the arrival time and the burst time given in milliseconds fine right? now they are asking what is the average turnaround time for these processes with preemptive shortest remaining time first algorithm right so it is a preemptive shortest remaining time first even if they have not given in any in any case if they not they'll not they'll not give preemption that means if even if they are only going to write shortest remaining time first algorithm that means it is shortest job first algorithm with preemption if we add shortest job first first with preemption then it becomes a shortest remaining time first algorithm okay and now they are asking what is the average turnaround time for each process okay now let us see for this let us make a gantt chart for this okay so we have the processes we have the process p1 p2 p3 and p4 process p1 is arriving at time 0 process p2 is arriving at time 1 process p3 is arriving at time 2 and process p4 is arriving at time 4 and it is the shortest remaining time first we got some now in this case you can see the process p1 is the only process which is available at time 0 therefore at time 0 only the process p1 will be available right now at time at time 0 we are only going to execute the process p1 for one in a time why because after one in a time a new process is coming which is the process p2 so we will execute process p1 from 0 to 1 and then we'll do a preemption therefore the bus time will remain 4 for process p1 fine now the process p2 see at time 1 we have two processes now we have the process p1 and the process p2 process p1 arrived at time 0 whose bus time is 4 now and process p2 is arrived at time 1 now its bus time is 3 right initially the process p1 bus time was 5 Now at time one we have two choices: either to execute process P one and to execute process P two. Now out of these choices, what process we are going to execute now? If you see, it is the shortest remaining time first algorithm. Now out of these two processes, which is having the shortest remaining time? It is the process P two. Therefore, we are going to execute the process P two. Now we are going to execute the process P two. Till how much time or till what time we are going to execute the process P two? If you see, the next process is coming at time two. right next process coming at time 2 after time 2 we can check whether the burst time of the next process is less than the remaining burst time of this fine now let is i don't have to uh, show this context switch but let me just show uh, here there will not be any context switch let us say that process p2 is going to execute till time 2 now after that the burst time of the process p2 is only 2 at time 2 we have the process p3 also we have three process process p1 p2 and p3 but out of these three processes only p2 will be will continue why because it will always be having a, a very low burst time instead of writing it uh, executing it till 2 what we can do is we can execute the process p2 till time uh, till time 4 right because at time 4 a new process is coming and till time 4 this will always be the shortest job right now you can see we have time 0 to time 4 right now this at time 4 we have the process p1 p3 and p4 p2 is already completed right now out of these three processes which is having the shortest burst time it is the process p4 so we are going to execute the process p4 till time 5 because it is only going to have one minute of burst time right after this we are going to execute the process p3 we so will execute the process p3 till how much time till time 8 5 plus 3 is 8 now we are going to execute the process p1 so process p1 till what time till time 12 right so we have all these times after this what is the completion time ct is a completion time at what time the process p1 completed process p1 completed at time 12 what is the process completion time of process p2 it is 4 so process p2 completed at time 4 what is the completion time of process p3 it completed at time 8 what is the completion time of process p4 it is 
5 right after this let us find what is a arrival time so it is turnaround time not arrival time it is a turnaround time now what is a turnaround time turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time so it is 12 minus 0 is 12 4 minus 1 is 3 8 minus 2 is 6 5 minus 4 is 1 so what is the total turnaround time now total is 12 plus 3 is 15 15 plus 7 is 22 fine so if we find out what is the average turnaround time then average turnaround time is total upon the total number of processes how many processes we have we have the four processes 22 upon 4 which is equal to 5.50 therefore the answer number a is correct okay so let me revise it again at time 0 we had only one process whose burst time was 5 so we will execute the process p1 till time 1 after 1 unit of time why we are executing till 1 unit of time is because we are going to get the process p2 and the process p2 is coming at time 1 and the bus time of process p2 will be less than the bus time of process p1 so we are going to execute the process p2 now now even if we execute the process p2 till time 2 then also process p2 will always be smaller than the process p3 why because process p2 has already completed one unit of work now it required two units of work that is why instead of taking process p2 out of the cpu what we are doing is we are continuing with process p2 so process p2 will execute till the next process will uh, come now till time 1 to 4 process p2 has completed its execution right after this we have seen that process p2 is complete the number of processes which are still remaining are process p1 p3 and p4 out of these three processes which process is having the shortest remaining time it is a process p2 so we are ex sorry it is a process p4 so we are going to execute the process p4 completely till time 5 because it, its burst time is only one then after the completion of process p4 we'll ex we'll find what is the shortest job after this the shortest job is process p3 so we are going to execute the process p3 till time 5 to 8 so it is going to complete at time 8 then it will complete its work and then we are going to execute the process p1 till time 12 fine now if you see what is the completion time of these processes process completion time of process p1 is 12 completion time of process p2 is 4 completion time of process p3 is 8 and completion time of process p4 is 5 what is the turnaround time? Turnaround time is the completion time minus arrival time. So it is 12 minus 0, 4 minus 1, 8 minus 2 and 5 minus 1 which is going to give you 22. Now if you find the average turnaround time then it is 22 upon 4 because we are having 4 number of 4 processes here. Fine. So it is 5.50. So this is the correct answer for this.